conclusions that we have looked at so far, <coughs> C equals lambda nu, <coughs> E equals H nu. Now, we talked with V, C equals lambda, about what C equals lambda nu, that we can solve this for really any of those variables, but if we wanted to solve for nu, we get C over lambda, because that points out the um, um, inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. That's why I like to write it that way. And then here, we recognize that, hey, since nu equals C over lambda, I can rewrite this equation as E equals HC over lambda. We have that, we've already gone through all that, right? Just reviewing. Um, this equation, I'm actually not showing you a piece. That doesn't matter, I'm not going to make you guys write it down. Um, but what I'm saying is, this equation right here is energy per photon, per one photon. Now we discussed um, yesterday in our little packet or whatever that was, that a photon is a little particle of electromagnetic radiation. Okay? So this is where things start getting a little crazy. This is about as far as we're going to go uh, with this concept called quantum mechanics because one, we're in high school, okay? And quantum mechanics is like graduate level stuff and beyond, okay? And, uh, but, but it, I think it helps doing some of the things we're doing for you guys to understand where the stuff that we're going to learn a little bit later, where it all comes from, okay? But anyway, I'm introducing this word saying that energy is quantized. You've never you've possibly heard of quantum mechanics. Maybe not. Okay. And what that means is um, basically things are in little compartments or little packets. So where I'm going with this is um, we like to think of energy as being little packets of energy, not a continuous source of energy. A great example that I think is, that works on this with you guys, your brains, is you guys know down by the uh, um, guidance office area, you have a choice between either going up steps, I think it's two steps or three, two or three steps, might be three, and or a ramp. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. So most people in our experiences think of energy as a continuous kind of thing, like going up the ramp. Okay? No matter what distance you use, the, the, the amount of energy is going to be directly proportional to the distance that you move up or down that ramp, whether it's a, a 10 centimeter distance or a tenth of a millimeter distance, that, that ratio of height to energy is going to be a continuous kind of thing. Whereas going up the steps, this is more of a quantized type of thing, meaning that if you raise your foot, you, you have to, you have to uh, apply or supply enough energy to your foot to get that foot all the way up to the next step, right? If you only raise your foot up uh, not quite enough, are you going to make it to the next step? No, in fact, you might fall. Well, you might because your whole body is going to fall over because you trip, right? But you see where I'm going with that? So this is what we're talking about when we're talking about photons and the energy associated with this stuff. Everything's quantized or in little packets. You have to achieve that certain amount of energy to move forward. Whereas on the ramp, if you just move half a centimeter, are you going to continue going up the ramp? Right. But if you move your foot up half a centimeter, going up the steps, are you going to make it up to the next step? No. So that's what we're looking at, are little packets of energy, and that's what these photons are. All right, um, so here's the thing though, as in most things chemistry, these are really, really tiny, really, really, really tiny little things, okay? And in order to have something big enough or, or the numbers large enough for us to actually do something with and make sense of, we would need a really, really lot of these things for us to do things. And in chemistry, what is that word that we use to represent a really, really large amount of things? like number of atoms, or number of electrons, or number of molecules. It starts with an M, 
ends in O. Mole. Excellent. Mole. Very good. Okay. Don't change your equation. But a lot of times we're going to look at the number of moles of photons. When we do this, we will write the end in there, which represents Avogadro's number. We're not going to do that much this year, okay? I just want to show you this so that later in your life when you take more of this stuff, you'll know where this came from, okay? But we're just gonna stick with per photon for the most part right now. Okay, next. What does, how does that relate to one, what we saw back there with the spectra, with the line spectra, and what we're gonna be doing with it with this little assignment you're gonna be working on here in a little bit? Well. Let's imagine that there were four energy levels in a particular atom that we're looking at. Um, we looked at hydrogen yesterday, did we not? That was our first one we looked at, right? And if you remember correctly, I said that all of this energy level, and when we break it down into sub, each energy level into sub levels, this all came from studying the hydrogen atom, okay? And so we're gonna use hydrogen to have this discussion. I also had a discussion with you, I think, about how this related to an endothermic and exothermic process. Did I bring that up yesterday? Okay, so back there when I put the, the tubes, the spectrum <coughs> tubes into the power supply, that power supply was adding energy to the system. And so what would happen would be, if we, as we added energy to the system, if we added enough energy, the electron would jump up to the next energy level. Okay, now, light or electromagnetic radiation was not given off then because that energy was absorbed in an endothermic process. However, that electron could then jump back down to its original energy level, in which case that energy is now released to the, to the, to the universe in the form of electromagnetic radiation. And if you recall, and I kind of did this a little bit differently, darn it. I wanted to do this a little bit differently. <coughs> Um, so we get the electron jumping up, okay? But when it jumped back down, or went back down to its original energy level, it gave off light in the form of electromagnetic radiation. In this case, it was visible light. Does anyone remember the three colors that we saw for hydrogen? There were three distinct lines, other than the jumbled mess in between from the light that was over there. One of them was, oh, you're the one that used, I couldn't remember who, you're the one to use that. It's kind of a blue-green, she called it teal. Yeah, so we had a red, we had a blue-green or teal, and we had a purple. Would you guys agree with that? Okay, and did we have the discussion yesterday about what the colors represent as far as the amount of energy is associated with them? Red is the lowest. Red was the lowest frequency, therefore lowest energy. Purple was the highest frequency, therefore the highest energy, okay? so. If we only added a certain amount of energy to get that electron out maybe to this energy level, and when it jumped back down, there's not a lot of energy that was released there, so maybe we saw a red light, okay? But maybe some uh, energy, some of the electrons had enough energy in them that they jumped up to the next energy level beyond that. And of course, when they jumped back down to their original energy level, they gave off more energy. In this case, it might have been in the form of that, I don't have teal, but I have blue and green, which kind of looks like that. Okay, maybe it gave off that color because it jumped a further distance down. And then lastly, remember, maybe that some of the electrons had enough energy that they jumped up way up to this energy level, and when they came back down all the way to the original, we got that purple because there was quite a bit more energy involved there. Does that make any sense where I'm going with that? So the colors kind of <coughs> give us an indication as to where those electrons had gone and then come back from. Yes? Okay, well, now I'll go back to either the step analogy or even a ladder analogy. You ever climb up a ladder? Right, okay. And as you climb, now, now we're talking about gravitational potential energy, but energy, okay? Um, so to go up the ladder, every time you take, you go up another rung, you're going, you're, get, you're gaining energy, gravitational potential energy, right? And if you come back down in a hurry, you're losing that energy. 
Are you asking me why to the next energy level? Like why do they need energy? Yeah. What makes them need it? Yeah, what makes them need it? The electricity that we added. Okay. The electrical energy that we added to that. Okay. We could heat them. Is there like an infinite amount of variance? Ah, uh, yeah. That's interesting. That's a very interesting question. As it turns out, yes. But we're only going to focus on about the first four or maybe five or six. You'll see that in the next few days. Okay, and then last Before question. Thanksgiving, your answer, your questions will be answered. Okay, last question. Does like the atom like expand? No, the no, they're the same, they're the same size. So how is there infinite room it doesn't expand? There's just more places for them to go. And that's why I would say, so there's like an infinite number of rungs on a ladder. What's that? No, you see where I'm, you could climb infinitely high if you had a ladder that was tall enough and had an infinite number of rungs. Yeah. Okay? I know it's not perfect yet, but let it let it let it, let it slide for a little bit. You you have some good questions there. Yes, Jay. Where are the electrons going to be? Different energy levels. That's why I put those arcs out there that represent the energy levels. We added electricity, and it wasn't, each of the electrons was absorbing more and more of that, or different amounts of that energy, and going to different energy levels. Yes, Grace? So then my answer for the rest of the eyes, can you just lose energy when you go back to where it came from? Yes, that's, that's what happens. You know, as it, as it goes back to where it originally came from, it loses that energy, and now gives off the energy in some sort of electromagnetic radiation, we got to see the visible portion of that. That's why I put the... Is it like a current, kind of like it goes forward and back like multiple times? Or forward yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be going up, jumping down, going up, jumping down. Yeah. Okay. Don't get too hung up on that. I'm just trying to show you the relationship between what you saw and why you saw what you saw. You're not going to have to go in. Again, I'm, 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 I'm on a really thin little line here going beyond what should happen in a high school class. But I like to pro possibly provide an explanation as to what we're seeing. All right, anyway, moving on. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna throw one more equation at you. What we're going to be able to do is predict what colors we're going to see based on the number of energy levels that these electrons have come from. Okay, we're actually gonna be able to calculate this. You, some of you asked me, I think, what do the numbers mean on the, on the side? Were, didn't a couple of you? There like like should have gone from a four to a seven. Yeah. Does anyone remember that? Yeah. Okay, anyway, here's the thing. The visible spectrum goes from approximately 400 to approximately 750. <coughs> nanometers. Now, do you remember me giving you a value for C? What was the value for C? Constant. Well, it is a constant. What is the value of that constant? 9979 9, times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Does anyone remember? <sighs> This constant. Okay, so we have seconds in there. Does anyone remember what the unit for nu was? Hertz. Hertz, which means one over one second. Okay, so what units, when we're using these equations, what do our distances have to be measured in? To use the equations, our distances are going to have to be measured in meters and our time is going to have to be measured in seconds. I'm telling you that the wavelengths of visible light are from around 400 nanometers to around 750 nanometers. So obviously there's going to have to be a lot of converting being done here. Does anyone remember the relationship between meters and nanometers? Okay. Does anyone remember the relationship between meters and nanometers? There we go. One times 10 to the ninth nanometers equals one meter. So there are a billion nanometers in a meter. Yes, Gracie? I'm just kind of confused on how the 400 like something frequency is the 
No, that's wavelength. That's wavelength. Okay, that's wavelength. These are wavelengths. Okay. Nanometers of wavelength. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, moving on. So this is all stuff that's going to tie in. Like I said, we're going to be able to predict this or at least calculate what we should be seeing or what we <coughs> have seen with this equation. This is our last equation. Now, this value here, um, remember how I said that H and C are both constants? So therefore, technically, if you multiply those out, you would come up with something else that would be another constant, okay? Well, what I've done here is shown you a number that is a result of a couple of other values that are constants, and I just wrapped them up into one number for you. Does that make any sense where I'm going with that? Actually, H and C are included in here, as it turns out. But there's another number also called the Rydberg constant. So there's three constants that all together make up this constant. I'm just giving you this number to have. So you guys don't have to worry about that. The unit for this is joule. Okay? Now, this is for energy level transitions. Let's call this the first energy level, the second energy level, the third energy level and the fourth energy level. Okay. What if we had an electron that went from the second energy level to the fourth energy level? What wavelength or what frequency of radiation would be either absorbed or given off. Now, I have to go back and touch back on those things we talked about earlier this year with energy. If you recall, we talked about endothermic and exothermic, right? Endothermic means energy is going into the system, because in chemistry we worry about the system, whereas an exothermic process, the energy leaves the system and goes out to the, to the environment, the universe, okay? That's, and then we, what sign did we apply to endothermic processes? Does anyone recall? Remember the system is gaining energy, so we assigned endothermic A plus sign, and if the system loses energy, means it's decreasing its energy, it's energy left, therefore we assign that A negative sign. You guys maybe recall that? Okay. Well, those, and, and John, I think, is the only one that has currently taken physics. Some of you are taking physics, but I don't think you've gotten to this point yet. Is anyone else taking physics right now? I don't think you guys have gone into energy yet, right? You're still in, in mechanics, if I remember correctly. Okay, so, um, but you've been there, okay? And in physics, <laughs> interestingly enough, they're gonna use exactly the same equation, except it's not gonna have the negative sign. Because in physics, we kind of care about the environment, the surroundings, the universe. Okay, so, so, so to have the numbers be positive, they, they just switch everything. All this negative sign does is switches everything over to the system. You'll see that here in a little bit. Yes? So that's the constant component? This is a constant. No, it's not the constant for energy. I'm not done yet. Okay? I'm, I'm building an equation here. Hang on. Hang tight. Okay? I'm building an equation. Now, the rest of this equation will look like this. Just write it down, then I'll come back and tell you what it, what it all means. represents the energy level. So we got two ends. What do you think the subscripts mean? First. Yeah, initial and final. So if we're talking initial and final, we're talking a or electrons moving from one energy level to another, that means we're going to have a change in energy, so we need to add the delta sign over here. So now 
now what we're looking at is the change in energy that's associated with an electron moving from en one energy level to a different energy level. We can go adding energy, we can go decreasing energy. We can do anything, okay? And ultimately what we're gonna be able to do is find either the frequency or wavelength of those energy, of the electromagnetic radiation that would be given off in any of those scenarios, okay? So in this particular, oh, by the way, I do wanna go back to this. This actually is, I'm cheating here, because again, this is a high school class, so I'm actually going a little bit beyond a high school class, but I'm cheating a little bit. That number should actually have another symbol. Do not write this down. I'm just telling you this, so when you go on to your next thing in life, um, you'll say that Mr. Langman wasn't stupid. Actually, that one should be replaced by a Z, and that Z should be squared. Don't write this down, okay? The Z represents the number of protons the nucleus, okay? Now, remember I kept saying we're basing everything on hydrogen? How many protons does hydrogen have? One. What's one squared? One. one. So that's why I just went ahead and threw the one up there. Technically, it should have a z squared up there, but we're not gonna deal with that, okay? Yes? So we're only gonna find it for hydrogen? No, because, well, yes, the energy levels as they are described by the hydrogen atom. I, I'm just, just go with this. Okay, it's a weird thing. Just go with this. Okay? Yes, okay. right. So, what this is essentially saying is, in this particular case, we're taking the final energy level that the electron ended up, whether that was whichever direction it was going, and we're going to have the initial energy level here. Okay? We're going to take the reciprocal of that, is what that is, the square of that, which is essentially what it comes down to. So now we're going to be able to find the amount of energy that was either released or absorbed as an energy or as an electron went from one energy level to another. But what if I ask you, hey, what would the wavelength be of the electromagnetic radiation given off when an electron goes from the second energy level to the fourth energy level? Well, do you see any equations up here that have wavelength in them. Ah, wait, I see this one. So, in order to find the wavelength as the electron goes from this energy level to this energy level, I would need to know the value for H. Do you know the value for H? Yeah, it's a constant, so you know that. I would need to know the value for C. Well, it's a constant. Do you know that? Yes. I would know that need to know the value of the energy associated with that transition. Do you know that? Yeah. No, you don't. But you can find it using this equation. And so now that I have the, the energy, because I know the energy levels that it was involved in the transition, I can come back up here, rearrange this equation, plug it in, solve for this. Pretty straightforward process. What if I wanted to know the frequency? Well, I can either use this equation and solve directly for the frequency, or if for whatever reason I wanted to know both, I could use this equation to solve for the wavelength and then come up here and use this equation to solve for the frequency. Look how much fun we can have. You should see the look on Hannah's face right now. Her chin is about here, right? And so now I'm saying all these things, and you guys just seen a bunch of letters, and most of you are pretty solid in algebra, going, oh, this is just algebra, which that is the case. It is just algebra. But remember, <laughs> remember, watch what happens here. What's this? 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. What's this? 2.9979 times 10 to the 8. What's the energy? Oh, what's well gonna be like 3.24 times 10 to the negative, we'll go eighth joules. How is that a I, I know, but I, I already rearranged it in my head. Do you see where I'm going with this? Okay, a lot of science, a lot of values with scientific notation, blah, 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 blah. blah. We did a bunch of these earlier in the year when I was trying to teach you guys how to use your calculators and we were doing these, I was having you guys practice doing this in your head. Does this ring a bell at all? Okay, anyway. Yes, Gracie? So what does that, is that just a meta value, 2.178? No, no, 
that is the reason, again, I'm not going to get into it, but that is the result of three different constants okay. altogether. And why is, I'm just wondering why it's put in front, will it always be put in front of the changes? Okay, the then the put it over here. I'm just saying, is it, no. It no, doesn't, it doesn't matter. No, I get it, but is that a constant formula? That, that is my formula when I'm solving for any way I'm changing. Yes, initially that's initially it. Initially that's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. Well, now all we have to do is practice this.